Okay, so today I thought we should look at a few examples where we take real world data and turn it into a sinusoidal function. I don't know how, um, if this will take us the entire class period, but it's something we should do. And we will look at the graphs of the other trig functions, but we're going to spend much less time. So that will be something we do probably just Monday next week. So for now, let's finish up with these graphs of sines and cosines. So let's do an example and a very kind of classic example of a sinusoidal function is the tide in a harbor. The water rises and the water falls. So let's say in a certain harbor, um, the minimum water line is five feet and the maximum water line is 12 feet. And it takes half a day, so 12 hours to go from the min to the max and then back again. And let's say, let's say X is the time since, well, since some arbitrary selected value, the number of hours since midnight. And then let's say, that at midnight, the water line is seven feet. And this is a sinusoidal situation. The tide is rising and falling, rising and falling. And let's have as our goal finding finding a sinusoidal function that represents this situation. And we saw last time there's going to be, it's going to be an infinite number of sinusoidal functions we could use, but we'll just try to find one. And in particular, we saw yesterday, or rather Wednesday, we can use a cosine function, we can use a sine function. But let's see what we have. Let's see what we have, and let's see what we want. What we have is a sinusoidal curve, a graph that looks like this. And we have a minimum and a maximum value between five and 12. And we have a period. I mean, I guess the way I phrase it, I phrase it as going from a min to max and back to min, but that's the same as going from max to max. 
So whether you want to think of it as that distance or that distance, the period is going to be 12. So this is going to be A times the sine or the cosine At the moment, we won't express any preference of bx minus c plus d. And just like we did on Wednesday, we'll just work these a's, b's, and c's, and d's out. Um, and we're going to have to use desmos, I think, to find the horizontal shift. But we'll get to that when we get to it. Um, some of this we can just read off, or not quite read off, but pretty close. So the amplitude is probably always the place to start because it's always, you know, relatively straightforward, or usually relatively straightforward. The amplitude is half of the distance between the maximum and the minimum. So the, dif uh, the distance between the maximum and the minimum is seven. So our amplitude is going to be seven over two. This D is the value midway between those two numbers. And the midpoint between two numbers is their average. So this D is going to be 17 over two. And now we have to start doing some algebra, start solving some little equations. The next thing we know is the period, but the period doesn't show up in this equation. Not exactly. Instead, we have the period is 2 pi divided by b. And because we know that the period is 12, 2 pi over b equals 12 gives us an equation that we can solve. Multiply by B as so often happens, our B, we're now dividing by 12, and our B is some multiple of pi, um, in this case, pi over six. The, the two over 12 is one over six. So the only thing that remains is C. And there's more than one C that could work. And C is going to depend on whether we've decided to use the sine or the cosine. So at this point, we can no longer put that decision off. And there are situations where maybe one's going to be a little nicer than the other. 
but there aren't ever going to be situations where we have to use one or the other without any strong opinions either way. Let's just use the sign. Now, let's go to Desmos and let's see what we have. And make what we have is probably not quite what we want, but here we go. Y equals seven over two times the sine of pi over six x minus C. Desmos isn't going to know what to do with this C. Plus 17 over two. So that's because Desmos doesn't know what to do with this C. Let's just cut it out for a second. And let's see if this is doing what we want it to do. We want a maximum of 12 and a minimum of five. We've got that. And it's supposed to take 12 hours to go from here to here. And we have that. What we don't have is that at midnight, the height is seven feet. Um, so at midnight, the height is 0.85. And here's where we need to use technology a bit. The uh, textbooks always seem very ambivalent about this, but there's no hope in helping it. <laughs> no hope. Um, what we need to do is we need to find out where the height is a seven, and then we need to nudge this graph a little. We don't want the height to be seven at negative 0.846. We want the height to be seven at zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this graph and nudge it to the right by, by 0.846 units. Our graph is good, except that we need to nudge it to the right just a little. And this C and also this B control the horizontal shift, the nudging to the right. Let me write down where we're at. This pi over six is our B. And our goal is to take this and nudge it a little to the right by 0 0.846. Okay, so the horizontal shift is the tricky 
year one, or at least I've always thought of it that way. Because the horizontal shift is the only thing that involves two of these constants. It's C divided by B. And if we want to shift to the right, I mean, in theory, the horizontal shift has absolute values, but if we're trying to shift to the right, then everything will be positive. And again, just like with the period, this is something we can work out. C divided by B is the horizontal shift. And we want this to be 0 0.846. I, I mean, at this point, I would probably, probably get the decimal for this. I mean, I guess you could put this into, into the equation, but pi over six. Okay, let's open a new window and use Google as our calculator. Pi over six times zero point eight four six. Point four four two nine six. So let's round that to point four four three. And now we can go here, or rather here, and let's see if this does what we want it to. Last time we made a mistake, but this time we are right on the point. This is the right horizontal shift. And this graph is now doing everything we want it to do. It's seven feet at midnight. It reaches a maximum height of 12. It reaches a minimum height of five. And it is at 12 hours to go from the maximum to the maximum, which you could also think, I think the way it was written on the whiteboard, is that it takes 12 hours to go from the minimum to the minimum. So really, I mean, I'm framing this as being sort of a different, as being different from what we did Wednesday. But what we did Wednesday was take pictures and create equations for them. So once we figured out what the picture is, it's basically the same kind of problem. And let's do, we should have time for another example that we surely do. So, an example from the textbook. Let's look at a ferris. Sorry, this is way. There we go. Fighting with my phone. 
So we'll look at a, a real Ferris wheel. The London's Eye, which is a um, massive Ferris wheel located, one presumes, in London. It has a diameter of 135 meters. A single rotation. Takes 30 minutes. And Ferris wheel is boarded from a platform two meters above the ground. And our goal is the same as in the last problem. Let's try to create a graph for this thing. So the minimum value is at zero this time. I mean, the minimum value is at pi equals zero with some two meters above the ground, but we're looking, at, we're starting from the moment we get on to the Ferris wheel. And here's a situation I've said a few times, well, we can always use the sine or the cosine, but maybe one of them might be easier sometimes than the other. Um, if a minimum or a maximum is occurring at zero, that makes the cosine a good choice. By default, the maximum occurs at zero. But your A can be negative. If you put a negative sign in front of the cosine, the minimum is going to occur at zero. So unlike last time, where I waited until the very end to decide, is this a sine or a cosine or what? This time I'm going to right away say, well, this looks a lot like a negative cosine. And looking ahead a bit, that means that C, that horizontal shift, is going to just not be there because we're not going to need to shift it horizontally. Our minimum is going to be right where we want our minimum to be. But let's take all of this in, in the appropriate place and let's jot down what we have. So we're given the diameter of this Ferris wheel. So the diameter is the distance between the minimum and the maximum of this Ferris wheel. So the minimum occurs at two. The maximum is going to occur at 100 
37. There's the picture. The minimum is two meters above the ground. The diameter is 135 meters. The maximum is therefore 137 meters above the ground. All right, so the amplitude we actually could have figured this out. Just know the amplitude's gonna be half of the diameter, but is half of the distance between the minimum and the maximum values. So it's 135 divided by two. That's uh, 135 divided by two, 67.5. This D is the midway point between 137 and 2. I sometimes think, I mean, this is definitely a mistake I've made where to find the amplitude we subtract and divide by 2. To find D we add and divide by two. So 139 divided by two sixty-nine point five. So halfway done really more than halfway done because C is going to turn out to not be something we have to worry about. So negative 67.5 times the cosine of Bx minus C plus 69.5. And we know that the period is two pi divided by B. And we know, I guess I didn't draw it in, but the period is 30. One full trip from the bottom to the top and then back to the bottom takes 30 minutes. And I didn't draw it, but I did give that information. So B ends up being two pi over 30. And then I always handle the horizontal shift graphically. I take a look at what the graph looks like without any horizontal shift. And I ask myself, well, how much do I have to move this thing so it's where I want it to be? Yeah. We sort of said this a few times already, but the point of using negative cosine was that we're not going to have any horizontal shift. But let's, let's verify that. 
negative 67.5 times the cosine of um, 2 pi divided by 30x plus Sixty-nine point five. So we're uh, we're seeing very little of this graph. In fact, it looks like a parabola more than anything else. That's uh, a full period is thirty. So let's go up to. 40, and then the maximum height this thing reaches was, I forget, about 140, so let's go up to 140, and there we go. And as we predicted, because we used the negative cosine, there wasn't any um, shifting that needed to be done. And again, if, if instead of, you know, maybe this is kind of cute using the negative cosine, if instead of using the negative cosine, we used, for example, the positive sign, I mean, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. It would mean that the minimum isn't where we wanted it to be. So we would have had to introduce a C term to move this graph a little to the right so that the minimum is at zero. And with that, a little early, but I don't want to with most of the class being online, it doesn't make sense to start a new section when I haven't opened a new section on Canvas.